good morning and welcome to Zen Fits here in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. Title of today's fit is The Certainty in Uncertainty. The Certainty in Uncertainty. Ambiguous, isn't it? What is the certainty in uncertainty? This gets back to my Zen fit. In a Zen fit, if it's a, having a fit, nothing is certain. Nothing fits. Fitting means certain. Everything fits. It's certain. Look, everything fits. It's uncertain. Nothing fits. Nothing I do makes it fit. Zen fit is ambiguous. It doesn't fit. It does fit. Which is the fit? This gets us back to this. Some people still figure, trying to figure this out. Some people are still uncertain about, what. Is, I don't see the hag, I see the princess. I don't see the hag. Or, I see the hag. The hag is certain. Un princess, I can't see. Uncertain. One is certain, one's uncertain. Until you see both. Until you see both. So the uncertainty is when I see the hag but can't see the princess, but I should see the princess because you say there's a princess. I'm going to see a little strain, 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 strain. I can't see the princess. Help. Or I see the princess, but I can't see the hag. Back, strain, strain, try, try. What is that word on the tip of my tongue? What? Oh, I can't get it. It's so close. I can't get it. I can't get it. You see? Strain, strain, strain. Trying to find the certainty in the uncertainty. The uncertainty is that I can't see both. But I should. But I can't. I just see one. Or maybe I don't see either one. I just see an ink blot. Now, this is foolish. This is stupid. Then you click on. Or you just see the hag. And you give up, fuck it, click on, this is stupid. Boom, 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 click on, click on, you see. This me. This is opposite here. This is saying, what am I? What am I? There's uncertainty here. And if you see both, <coughs> am I too? <coughs> well, that's uncertain too. In other words, this is, an, this is a metaphor for self-discovery. This is a metaphor for finding the certainty in uncertainty. Whenever you have a Zen fit on the fit side, there's uncertainty. I can't get this puzzle to fit. I can't get this damn machine to work. I can't get the coffee maker to work. It's uncertain. Help. My wife will come in and say, push the button. <laughs> so we always partner up with somebody who can make our Zen fit fit, you see. Anyway, I easily digress. The point is, if there is a point, that the certainty in the uncertainty in quantum physics is called the uncertainty principle. Heisenberg, Heidenberg, Heisenberg, one of the founders of quantum physics, formed the uncertainty principle. You see, we've been living in a modern world since Descartes and Newton, 16th century, that is certain. And if science, say, say religion, in the Middle Ages, religion, Catholic Church, was certain. There was no science. If you were uncertain, you just asked the church. You asked, and then Protestantism came along and said, well, don't ask the church. They're corrupt. Ask the Bible. So if you're confused, you're uncertain, just, ask, just go ask the Bible. So now the Bible provided certainty. And science came along and says, pox on both of them, the Bible and the church, Reason, science, the scientific method will provide certainty. And it is certain that given enough time, you will know everything. Given enough time and computer power, 
the, all the unknowns will become knowns. There will be no more unknowns. That is the promised land. The promised land of science is that one day everything will be known. Everything will be conscious. There will be no more unconscious, no more doubt, no more uncertainty. You'll live in a certain world and everything will be, there will be no conflict. There will be no more ambiguity. Is it the hag or the princess? No. You'll be certain. But you see, the modern age is gone. The postmodern age is now our age, and the postmodern age began, if you watched Oppenheimer, with the uncertainty principle and the atomic bomb. The big uncertainty with Oppenheimer and the atomic bomb was if you light that thing off, will it cause a chain reaction that you cannot control? that will blow up the universe. It was uncertain. Now, that's a risk you can't take, right? That's like saying, uh, you know, <clears throat> it's uncertain whether or not you'll win the, win the poker game, but it's uncertain that you'll blow up the universe. Whoa! <laughs> Who wants to go there? Just 1%? He says, oh, it's just 99% certain. Can you take a chance on that 1%? That you would blow up the universe? Well, Oppenheimer went there. How did he find the certainty in this uncertainty principle? How did he find the certainty that it wouldn't blow up the universe? He didn't know. He wasn't certain, yet he did it. How's, what, what, what was his certainty? What was his certainty in the uncertainty? When you're confused and you don't know what to do and suddenly you just say fuck it and you do it, you do something, you have no, well what the hell am I doing? I my mother, I was 102, she was still driving when she was 100. She lost her car keys. Call it her poodle keys, she had a little poodle hanging on it. Went over there, she was distraught. I can't find my car keys. I know they're in the house because the car's out there. I've been looking for days. If I can't find them, I'm going to have a stroke. She's very distraught. The next time I went over there, I couldn't find them. So the next time I went over there, she was happy. Well, I said, what happened? She said, well, she wants to say, well, I just gave it up to God and said, I'm done with it, you find them. And immediately I found myself walking into the bedroom. What am I doing walking into the bedroom? Am I going dementia, you know? And I found myself putting my hand in my sweater pocket. What am I putting my hand in the sweater pocket? I don't know. And there were the keys. And there were the keys. Certainty was returned, restored. So in the middle of uncertainty, she discovered certainty by surrendering the uncertainty. She didn't ask God. She didn't, God didn't, you know, she, she didn't say, well, in other words, she said, I don't know why I went to this, some, you know, most people will say, well, Jesus told me to do it. <laughs> you know, God told me to do it, you know. But that's just another Certainty added on to an uncertainty. Well, is God certain? You know, say, you know, how do you, how, how do you know God? How do you know that's true? You see, in other words, once you have this uncertainty, unless you can find the certainty in the uncertainty, it just keeps on going. Wah 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 wah. The mic in the amplifier. It's a feedback loop. See, this is a fee This is a feedback loop here. This is the feedback loop. The yang and the yin. They're chasing each other around like two koi. You know, in the koi pond, Zen, you know, this is a Zen uh, Chinese. They're chasing each other, going around and around and around. The mic and the amplifier. Once you start one of these, it's going to go wow, 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 turn it off. It either explodes or certainty is born. When you get the wah wah, when you get the when you get the ambiguity, is it, is it a hag or a princess? Wah wah wah! I don't know. 
when you get that going, when you get that uncertainty principle introduced into certainty, the uncertain the uncertainty principle is doubt. You think you're doing great. Everything is wonderful. But a doubt comes in. And uncertainty, call it UP, up, uncertainty principle, is introduced like a seed in a cotton ball. The unperts, the un, the up or the uncertain principle is a seed of doubt. Am I really doing, is everything okay here? You know, something, wait a minute, something doesn't quite fit now. Now I got a Zen fit. Oh, these things here don't, I just excluded these, but <clears throat> I can't reject them, you know, like, you know, when you get all the evidence, mysteries are all about that. Oh, I got all the evidence, that guy did it, but but wait, wait these, what about these clues? What about this evidence? It doesn't fit. Ah, forget that. I got my man. But the detective is always curious. He always keeps that uncertainty principle going. Well, are you sure? Let's check out these other clues here. And he checks them out, despite the authorities, despite the bosses, despite everybody. He checks out these other clues because he's got the uncertainty principle going. And suddenly, a bigger picture that includes the question. And now he knows. And suddenly he gets up from the dinner table and goes running out and arrests the real murderer. He knows who did it. Knowing. Knowing is the certainty in the uncertainty principle. Now where does this knowing come from? It can't come from evidence. Because evidence will always create uncertainty. Well, you know, we need a little more evidence here. Uh, this is not quite certain yet. There's 5% uncertainty. I can't live with that. Got to find more evidence, you see. So either we start with 10% uh, uncertainty or 99% uncertainty. We can't let that little 1% go. We can never reach perfect certainty. And see, this was the end of the modern age, because the modern age, founded on Newton and Descartes, was that, given enough time, this method of reason and the method of discovering the laws of nature will lead you to certainty. And there'll be no doubt. You see. And this age came to an end in the 50s. Because, up until the 50s, Science was certain. The scientist said, take this vaccine. You took it, it was certain, it was okay. Everything the scientist said was true. But in the 50s, he began to doubt this. Just like Martin Luther questioned the Catholic Church. Science was our church. In the 50s, you saw on TV, a scientist, a medical doctor, smoking camels and saying it's good for you. I smoke it. <laughs> and at the same time, the same science was saying it's kill you. So science is saying it's okay and science is saying it'll kill you. That's uncertainty. And that's when science begin to collapse, you see. Because every study we have now creates an opposite study. Cholesterol is bad for you. Cholesterol is good for you. Don't eat fat. Eat fat. Don't eat meat. Eat meat. Yes, no. No, yes. Catch-22. Catch-22 is uncertainty. Because every yes creates its own no. You see, every yin creates its yang. Every hag creates the princess. Every princess creates the hag. Wah, 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 wah. Can't stop it. Mike and an amplifier. And when the mic and the amplifier, when the uncertainty principle gets going, wow, 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 it can only end two ways. It can either end by death and so and you go out and shoot everybody or yourself. That's certain. Or you awake up 
to the certainty in the uncertainty principle, and that is Zen. Zen creates the great doubt, the question, what am I? What am I? Which cannot be answered by Google and evidence, you see, by the objective world, by science. Science can't tell you who you are, can tell you what man is, can't tell you who I am. What am I, you see? Science can't tell me. I can't find myself on Google. It's uncertain. You are the uncertainty principle. We can make the objective world certain to a certain degree. There will always be a little uncertainty, but we can reduce the odds, get it up to 99%. But when it comes to who I am, I want to be certain, but I can't. So Zen produces the, is the question that will never be certain. You are unknowable. You are undefinable. Who are you? Who are you? I don't know. But does that mean you're demented? Does that mean you have Alzheimer's? No. It means you're alive. It means you are the question, not the answer. Man, you are a question. You are curiosity. You are an explorer. You are a discoverer of truth. But you're not truth. Because once you discover it, it becomes uncertain. But the knowing, the I am, is certain. Is certain, you see. So the knowing and the not knowing, the, the certainty and the uncertainty is ambiguous, is uncertain, is uncertain, you see. Can you live with that? <clears throat> what is aroused, what is the certainty that is aroused in the uncertainty? Well, we see it all the time. You got a contest, a basketball. <clears throat> Somebody halfway down the court just picks off the ball and shoots. How does he do that? He acts on faith. He doesn't question it. Well, let me see. Are the conditions right for me to throw this ball now? Is everything in place? Uh, what should I do? Should I bounce it three times? What is it? He just does it. Doesn't know how he did it. My mother didn't know how. She found the keys. She just did it. She just did it. Nobody did it. There was no agent. There was no Jesus. There was no God. There was no reason. She just did it. For no reason. There you go. Just did it for no reason. That is the certainty in the uncertainty. Just live for no reason. Just do it. Just do it. On faith alone, not faith in God, not faith in reason, not faith in science, not faith in your experience, not faith in the odds, like the gambler, not faith in anything. Just do it. Bam. The doing is the certainty in the uncertainty. And you have faith because it's uncertain how it will come out. It was uncertain that Oppenheimer wouldn't blow up the world. But he was the movie was a demonstration, a metaphor for faith mind, acting on faith alone, without any evidence, without any logic behind it, without any reason without any um, authority, without any poll. You act on faith alone. If faith, then faith. That is the certainty in the uncertainty principle. Thank you for dropping in. <laughs> Have a Zen fit today. <laughs>